Kentucky gets the win over Vandy on senior night. Dillingham is great. Reeves has another 20-point game. We're going to break down the win over the Commodores and also preview the matchup with the Tennessee Volunteers. Massive game. A lot on the line for the SEC tournament. A lot on the line all around in that game on top of a lot of folks around here just don't happen to like Tennessee. Those are going to be the topics on today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Wildcats Today, joined as always by my co-host, Carson Nash. Carson, how are you and your purple polo doing today? I'm doing great. And, you know, I was going to say, did you just come from a darty or something? You got your, you got your frat, frat look going. A darty? It's not a term I've heard. Um, no, I um, I don't know why. I just this isn't a forwards hat kind of kind of hat. Okay, it's more to, of a chill podcast type of day today. I mean, we're not we're not NPR, man. I don't know <laughs> what you want from me. Um, but sure, Barney with that shirt. Come on now, but not even the same color. Oh yeah, yeah, relatively close, <laughs> but. To get into this game, Carson, we'll get to the Tennessee game second, but we're going to start talking about the win over Vandy. You know, we're to the point in the season for me where it's like, I don't want to sit here and yell at clouds about defense. There's nothing nothing you can do at this point, in all honesty. We're not going to get in the lab at practice and fix anything. Some might disagree with that, uh, but I just, I don't see that happening. I think that the reality now is, you just got to play harder intensity defense. Watching that game, Carson, I, it's there. Kentucky, I thought, was sleepwalking a little bit, some la- early, some lazy passes, some things like that. The defense was, I thought, you know, better in the second half, still wasn't great. But that was kind of my thoughts on the game. Uh, but before, of course, we hear your thoughts, we want to thank everybody for subscribing and hitting that like button. I mean, this was just, we were at like 314 subscribers. And I believe the time we clicked record, we're at 381. Y'all are just so awesome. We really appreciate it. Um, You know, we did not expect the growth to take off like this. We really, really do appreciate it. The goal is to get to 500. What did we say, Carson? Was it by by the NCAA tournament? By Selection Sunday? Yeah, probably by Selection Sunday because we wanted to do like a live show for that. Yeah. So that's the goal. If y'all can help us get there, we'd really appreciate it. But like we always say, just tuning in, we really do appreciate it. But Carson, thoughts on this game? Thoughts on the win over Vandy? Where's your head at? Yeah, so we started off sluggish, um, and that was kind of expected. You know, a nine o'clock tip is no fun for anybody. And um, no. Rub actually felt or looked felt felt as in was watching because I didn't actually get to make it, but felt electric. The 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 TV projected it as very loud, so. Um, it looked like a good crowd, um, and it was well deserved because you know these seniors they deserve it. Antonio, Trey, who else am I leaving off? Cream, Cream, and Canada. Cream got a yeah. rebound, which was awesome. That was awesome. That was yeah. a big board too. Yeah, but but these guys they deserve it. So yeah. that was good to see. Um, we came out sluggish. You Vandy nine o'clock tip. That was expected. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. But we locked in, and um, you know Dillingham kind of took over at the end of the first half and the beginning of the second, and then. We didn't look back from that point on. Yeah. You know, um, I wrote this in an article. Coach Cal keeps saying, enjoy this team. And yes, enjoy this team. I'm not saying don't enjoy this team, but enjoy Dillingham. I mean, this kid, he makes the game fun. You know, Reds fans in the world, shout out to Reds fans. Ellie De La Cruz makes the game fun. You know, that Rob Dillingham does the same thing. He just makes watching Kentucky basketball fun. The way he plays. We always talk about it. You know, Reeves is an incredible basketball player, but he's, you know, he just, he, he goes out there and he does his thing every night. He, you know, with Rob, the way he plays, you never know when he's going to do a 360 spin cycle. His opponent's going to fall over into the student section. He's going to gonna can a three. I mean, he can do things that no one else in college basketball can do handling the basketball. Enjoy him because you don't know how much longer you have him. So I am. Um, it feels like every time the offense gets stagnant, here comes Rob, and then yeah. you know it's going in and it's going to him. So it, it's pretty exciting to watch. It's 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 he he's comparable a lot to Malik Monk in that fact that like what the what the hell was that shot? But it goes in. Yeah, it goes in. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, there, if I had a, a, a dollar for every time I was like, no. And I was like, oh, yeah, good shot. Good call. Good idea. Well, at this point in the season, I'm just like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Every time he puts it up. No, yeah. It's so that's that's how it was. It's like, are you why why take a jump shot from two inches in front of three point line? Okay, it went in, whatever it's fine. No big deal. Maybe next time take a step backwards though. Untucked, but, um, untucked jersey, Rob Dillingham's a different animal. I like you know when he changes his his hairdo. Does he go the ponytail? Does he go the the pig? T- you know, it's like it's mm-hmm. which Rob Dillingham are you getting like you getting 35 points, you're getting 20. Um, but yeah, he's special. I mean, he's just special. There's no other word to describe him. Um, you know, in this game, I thought that I thought Wagner and Justin Edward, Justin Edwards and DJ Wagner continue to shoot the ball. Well, I have numbers on that. DJ's um, back. Yeah. Uh Oh, he's back. But he's back. in the last three games, DJ is nine of 14 from deep. And yeah, I actually have his, I have his numbers up. And then in Justin's, I just I literally wrote about it like 20 minutes ago. And then in Justin's last five games, he's 10 of 14. So yeah. these guys are shooting the basketball well from deep. And you DJ, know, DJ is 13.3 per game, points per game in the last three games on 65% shooting from the field and 64% from three. 64%. Yeah. Yeah. He's been he's been really, really good. And we needed them to be good. Um, you know, I talked to um, a buddy who has a lot of connections with NBA scouts, and and he got quotes from about five different scouts on DJ Wagner, and it was the same thing from everybody. We like the frame. We like the ability to get to the rim. We like the, the way that he can defend, but if he can't shoot, nobody's going to want him. He's going to have to shoot to be an NBA player. And if he can, you know, if this team goes on a run and he can keep doing what he's doing right now, now obviously not 64%. That's not really sustainable unless you're Reed Shepard, in which case like 85% is sustainable. But if he can keep shooting the ball as he has his last three games, I really do think he can help his NBA draft stock, hearing where scouts' heads are at on him as a player. Which And here's the thing. He's going to be open. Yeah. Because because teams are going to leave him because he can also beat you off the dribble. So yeah, teams yeah. are going to be like, oh, I'm going to sag off a of DJ because you know Rob and Reed are going to kill you. So we'll we'll take the we'll take the chance on DJ. If he can hit those open shots at the clip, not maybe not at 64%, but yeah. at a pretty good clip, I mean that you're you're unguardable at that point. Yeah, no, I mean you're completely right about that. I um DJ was great. Justin, what did he have? I mean, he had Oh, he didn't start because Cream started. He had he was three of six, two of four from deep, five rebounds, ten points. Take it all day long. If you can get twenty one points together from Wagner and Edwards, whoo, <laughs> you know, think, yeah. if, if you can get that to thirty, watch out because you know you're getting twenty. We we've talked about this before, Carson. You know you're getting twenty from Reeves. You know you're getting fifteen from Dillingham. You know you're probably going to get ten from Reed. Um, you know you're going to get probably 15 from the from the seven footers. You know this is how it stacks up. So if you can start getting 20, 25, 30 points in the 20 to 30 range every game from those guys in March, watch out. I mean, I was I was watching that game last night, and I was just getting real excited because you see the confidence on Justin Edwards' yeah. face. Yeah, man. You, can, you can feel it. Yeah. Oh man, you just feel it, and you're like, this team's going to do something special because they have so much freaking confidence. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, and you know, Kurt, I mean, there's gonna be people that comment, and if and, and if you're one that wants to comment this, no one's arguing with you. I'm with you, but they're gonna say, you know, it doesn't matter the defense isn't good. People are gonna say that. And I, I've seen it um on articles I've written on uh, uh, Facebook comments. Not saying I disagree with any of that because it's true. The defense is not great, but this team, it's just an intensity thing. I do believe when this team wants to defend, they can defend. In that first half, it, it the last seven minutes against Arkansas. When they they went now, once again, you know we're. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to. Hey guys, we're down nine in Arkansas. Maybe let's let's play a little defense. How about it? You know, I don't want to. You, you shouldn't have to do that in March. It should be it's March Madness. We've all dreamed of this since we were little kids in the backyard. You know, we're gonna play the hardest defense we can for forty minutes. I hope that that flip will switch for these guys. Yeah, and think about it. This team has been really really good in big games. Yeah, they have. And that that's another reason why I have confidence in March because of that. Yeah, exactly. But I just – I think that against Vandy, against Arkansas, I think that they were a little bit 
they didn't, they weren't as fired up as they're going to be for Tennessee or as fired up as they were for Auburn or playing Mississippi State on the road. You know, on the road is different because, you know, you got to have, you got to give yourself, there's no fans to pump you up. You got to pump yourself up. Um, but I, I think that, yeah, you're, you're, no one's going to yell at you if you're going to comment about defense because you're not wrong. It's just, I don't know what you can do now. This team is what this team is, I think, and there's not going to, that's not going to change in, you know, 13 days, whatever it is. So the key now is play hard, play high intensity defense. And if you do that and continue to score like this team can, this team can make a run. There's no question. You know, and Carson, people will comment and say, no, they can't, no defense. I just, here's what I challenge some people. Carson, tell me, if, you know, if you agree with me on this. If you don't think this team can make a run in March and your reason is defense, do me a favor, expand on that a little bit in the comments. I'm really curious to hear some thoughts other than just, you know, no run. They're not going to make a run, no defense. Expand on that. I'm really curious to hear some thoughts. So, I mean, Carson, what else do you think about this game? What did you think about the seven-footers in this game? Yeah, I thought they were good. I thought I thought Big Z was really good, and then I, <sighs> that I just I just thought based off like of an exciting thing because he had some he's had some jams that were pretty he exciting. Does cool stuff. Yeah, and he's just dude. And we got to talk about Reed Shepard on those outlet passes. I mean, mm-hmm. he was dropping dimes, and it, I mean, it's his knack for just knowing basketball is absurd. yeah. Yeah, he, like, he the, the passes are so crisp. Mm-hmm. Like they are like I can feel the wind in the press box from the passes. Like it's like it went it went right over the finger of the outstretched Vandy guy, and Antonio Reeves barely gets it and then throws a lob to Z where he dunks on somebody. Oh yeah. That's sh- that's showtime. That's yeah, showtime no, that right was there. that was a really fun play. You know what's funny? I missed the the pass from Shepard to Reeves. I looked down and I saw the, the big Z's dunk. But I didn't see the I'm like, oh my goodness, that's the best pass I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Like that was insane. It's absurd. Um, you get free points on that kind of stuff, though. That's yeah. the thing. That, if you watch Reed Shepard play, I love this, but him, you know, now obviously probably 60% of, of college point guards do this, but as soon as he has the ball in his hands, he's looking, he's looking for someone to pass the ball to. He's not looking to dribble the ball past the you know half court line and um and, and and set up the offense. He's looking to find somebody open for a layup. And Kentucky, I bet you they score six. You know, I know they score a lot in transition, but I'm talking about just flat out. Reed gets the ball in his hands, looks up, finds somebody, outlet pass, layup. It, it, Reeves gets those a lot. Justin gets them a lot because they, they're always hustling down the floor. Um, so the seven footers, I, I think Big Z. Now listen, he's shooting open threes. He's not shooting uncontested. I mean, he's not shooting contested. He's shooting open threes. But if two don't go in, don't shoot a third. I'm cool with him taking two. If you're over two, I'd say do the pick and roll. Let's well, get I'm gonna I'm gonna argue with you on that. Just because I think I think he. I mean, he's wide open when he's shooting those. Like yeah. no one's close to him when he's shooting those. So, and I think he has a good stroke. Like I I, I yeah. I, don't hate his jumper. Like I now, if it was like Aaron Bradshaw or maybe even like a do, I would be like, stop shooting. But I just think Z has his jump shot and his like he's fundamentally sound shooting yeah, wise to where I'm like, he's a good enough shooter where I'm not mad if he's shooting wide open shots. So yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with you there. My 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 rebuttal to that would be like I would say the same thing about. DJ and Justin, I think the only players on this team, and you already said Adu and Aaron, you know, the only players on this team that if you miss your first two, please keep letting them fly. I mean, obviously, Reed, Rob, and Antonio. Um, but I mean, that's, I mean, that's all I, I'd say. If you miss the first two, I'd, I'd maybe think about looking for something else. I just, um, now with the way Kentucky can score. If you want to keep letting them fly, and I mean, the law of averages for this team will happen to where they're going to fall at some point. But um, I mean, I mean, look at Big Z. He's three seven from the field, zero three from deep. If you know, if if he his numbers look a lot better if he's zero one from deep, three of five with eight with, with um six points and three rebounds, one assist. Um, how many blocks did he have? Did he have a couple. Oh, he didn't have any blocks. Something's wrong with the world. Um, Uganda had three blocks, but I mean, this is a win. 
I mean, here's the, we're not we're not gonna it, it, it's Vandy. We're not gonna sit here and we're not gonna be like, well, they held him to seventy seven. I wish we'd have held them to like sixty five. It's Vandy. They're not very good. Um, but we're not we're we're, just, we're not we're no we're past nitpicking this. We know we're not gonna nitpick this team anymore. We're past that because of it's just too late in the season to do that. There's nothing you can really do here. So I mean, uh, oh, we need to have a serious conversation, and it's a two word conversation. What? And it's not that purple shirt. Tr- you're, I'm you're not gonna, gonna get a middle that finger up. coming from me. Here, so. Oh, whoa, whoa! <laughs> boop, boop. Bring that thing to Nashville. <laughs> uh, but, but Trey Mitchell. Yeah, Trey Mitchell. Thought, uh, you know, I loved this. I was up writing my article, and they were doing um at the post game radio show. You can hear it when you when you sit up there, and him, uh, Cream, and and uh, Canada, and Antonio, and. Trey came and sat, and, and Trey said, listen, stick with me, which I loved. That fired me up. I'm yeah. not saying bench him. I agree, stick with him. But, I mean, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I, I'm i going to say the same exact thing that I said about DJ. I think you got to continue to let him figure it out because this team's better with him. I mean, yeah. I don't think he should start. I, I think he should get probably backup minutes because I think your best, your best lineup is – Rob, Reed, Antonio, uh, Justin, and Z. I, I, statistically, that's your best lineup. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I think he should still play. I mean, he's a he's a great passer. He's a threat from deep when he's healthy. And he's a leader. And those three things, I mean, you can't really just kick him to the curb at this point. You can't do that. So I think he should still – He sh- they should still have him in there figuring things out. Because ultimately, you do want to win the SEC championship, but you do want to have the best team at going into March, going into the actual tournament. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it's a tough one because it's just like DJ had time. You know, we're one game away from postseason. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, let's say – Kentucky's a three seed. They they beat Tennessee. They go they they win the SEC tournament. And they're a three seed, right? Maybe uh, maybe they be a two seed. We're say a three seed, right? Mm-hmm. And Trey Mitchell doesn't play great in the tournament. Doesn't play great in the SEC tournament. Doesn't play great against Tennessee. And you open up against whoever. I mean, how can you have them in there? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't know how you can have them in there. So. It just um, – that's my thought. It's like we're late in the season. I believe – we know who he is as a player. He's got to be banged up still yeah. because he was Mr. Consistent. We know who he is as a player. Mm-hmm. So I just – I don't know – I don't know my thoughts on that. I, I'm kind of like if you want to ride with him because he's 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 a veteran, he's been great for this team, do it. I'm not going to yell, yell at Coach Cal for doing that, but – um. You know, definitely a little bit concerning for me. Oh so. no, definitely, it's definitely concerning. And yeah, you, just like just like what I said about DJ, if it continues to be an issue, then yeah, he he can't he can't play at this point because you're gonna you're getting in at starting now. Every game is at at the utmost importance. Every single game. You got yeah. Tennessee. You need to beat Tennessee because you beat Tennessee. You're you're getting either a two or a three seed in the SEC tournament. More than likely, so, two, two, right? yeah. And and then after that, after that, you got tournaments. So both tournaments. So you don't want to lose in either of those. So yeah, he he does need to figure it out sooner rather than later. And it's going to be tough because that injury stretched for a good amount of time. Yeah. So any other thoughts on this Vandy game? I, I, I'm good on. I, I'm good on it. I mean, some frustrating things, but Kentucky gets the win. That's really all you can say. That's all that matters. You just couldn't lose. I, yeah. Everybody had. We know what happened last year. Everybody had a weird nine o'clock game. Rupp Arena, senior night. There's emotions. It's just. It was set up to be a weird game. It was one of those. I didn't care. Just win the game and move on. I don't care because you know what I mean. It's. I, they won. Move on. I'm not too hung up on, on that game. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about this Tennessee game, but first we want to tell you about our friends at the Plains Coffee Coffee Company. So, you know, Plains Coffee serves a ton of different types of coffees, and they'll sure you're they are sure you're gonna love them. I mean, it's really good coffee. 
We just got some sent to us. It's really, really good stuff. If you're not a coffee drinker, they also have teas. I know some don't like coffee. Some like tea better. They got both options for you. You know, there's no better way to start the morning than a cold, I mean, a warm cup of coffee. Cold cup of coffee if you're an iced coffee guy. Carson, you seem like an iced coffee guy. You an iced coffee guy? You know, I like to dabble in both. I like it. It just depends on the day for me. You can do it either way, of course, because it's coffee. You can do it your way. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you go to plainscoffee.com and use promo code wildcats, they'll give you 10% off your order. Great coffee. Absolutely love it. The teas are good as well. Incredible, incredible product, fresh product. Go check them out. Promise you all won't regret it. So Tennessee, Wait, let me, let me, let me start off with something. All right. And this oh. is going to be a rare, no. rare occasion for Carson. I'm going to say something nice about the uh, the team down south. I know what you're going to say. I already know what you're going to say. Congrats to yep. Tennessee for winning their 12th yep. SEC regular regular season championship. We used to actually surpass that mark in 1951. Knew exactly so, you were going to say that. Congrats to the Vols. You're going to get like a sign. There's going to be a sign. And it's like, this guy can't come in this city. <laughs> They're going to like mark That's it. Fine. That is fine by yeah. me. Yeah. They are not going to let you in Knoxville. They're not going <laughs> to. They're going to say, sorry, which I mean, I am not. wouldn't be too upset if they didn't. Not too hard to keep me out of there. No, that's kind of where I'm at too. Um, but yes, Tennessee, I knew, I knew, I knew you were going there. I had to. I, I had to. No, and that's a hilarious stat. Because um, Don connects out here like, ring me, ring me. Yeah. No, Tennessee, okay. I will say this, and we're going to – listen, we're going to have Tennessee fans in the comments. I love and it. And they won the first game. They won the SEC. Respect Congrats. me all. But saying ring me for winning the SEC regular season title is crazy. Is a little bit I, – I mean, you almost – I mean, it's a little embarrassing. Now, once again, we joke in our house here, Carson. We call it uh, eating chips. It's like when you go, kind of made that putt, and you're sitting on the couch eating Cheetos, you know? <laughs> yeah. Don't connect's going to be a top pick in the NBA – draft you know maybe tough to eat incredible basketball players so i'm not you know i am not a division one basketball player in any way so no you know but i'm just simply saying i i don't think you would have seen kentucky players say ring me for an sec regular season title and i think it says a lot about the stat you read i think it's the just the tradition you know so tennessee fans that's gonna upset y'all i understand you can comment and yell that's fine we appreciate that but um <laughs> so Let's break down this game, Carson. I mean, where's your head at? I'm kind of in the same spot as last time. I mean, last time, now, of course, you got to go play in Knoxville compared to playing in, in, in the Rupp Arena, which don't love that. But last time I said, hey, if you stop Dalton Connect and you can win, the, make the other guys beat you, well, golly, they did. They sure did. Um, you know, I think um, was who, who were, it was – was it um was Ziegler uh, and Josiah Jordan James? Jordan James. I knew Ziegler, but they both had like twenty. Was it twenty eight? They both had. Or like I think 20? I think Josiah Jordan James had twenty six and Ziegler had twenty eight. Yeah, I mean it's um. Yeah. Let me pull up those. Let me pull up the numbers from that game. But I mean, you know, Tennessee played a really really good game. Yeah, no, they both had twenty six. Okay. Uh, Connect had sixteen. He was five of fourteen. Adu had eleven and he had a double double eleven eleven. Um. So, and then Viscovi had 11. Every starter in double figures, two starters, three starters over 15, two over 25, you know. Um, and then only five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 bench points. But, I mean, what are your thoughts from this game? How can Kentucky beat Tennessee? What do they have to do to take down the Vols? I actually, I actually think our team is a lot different than where we were when we played the Vols last time. Um, I think you had the emergence of Justin Edwards. Yeah. Um, since then, uh, Big Z being a key piece, had he won the key piece then, and then you also have DJ coming back into his own and shooting really good. So, I think our team's a lot different than what we were back then. I think they're still the same team, um, and they will be. They they don't have they have old bunch of old guys, so they've been steady steady the same pace the whole time. So, um, I. I honestly like us in this game. I think I think we play better away from home. I, I think that we definitely play better away from home. Um, I think it'll be a, a crazy atmosphere, insane atmosphere. Um, 
And I think that our guys are going to come out on the winning end this time. I just think we're going to split um, the series. Um, but, yeah, that's what I think. I agree with you. Um, and, you know, I actually have a plan. I'm going to take the Vols when we get to this because what happened last time I picked against Kentucky, you remember? It was Auburn, wasn't it? Yeah, and you took you took Kentucky and I took Auburn. So we're gonna we're gonna go with that. We're gonna stick with it because we're we're one and zero when that happens. Um, I, it's one of those games. I mean, you just Reeves has to show up. Dillingham needs to be road Dilly. He needs to play well. Reed needs to be smart, crisp, firm passes. You know, no, nothing lazy. He was a little bit lazy passing in the first half. Smart passes against. Tennessee, you know, you can't give up the open looks. I wrote this in, in a couple articles. I mean, the, the looks you were giving up to uh, Vandy, if you give those up, get, give up those kind of looks against Tennessee, you will lose. I mean, connect, you know, he doesn't, he needs an inch of space to get it open, to, to be open. You know what I mean? He does not need a ton of room. So I think this game to me is more than, it's more than X's and O's. Um, you know, it, it's more about who wants it more, you know, and that sounds, I mean, it sounds like I'm giving a, a speech. Let's and freaking a go. Let's freaking go. Andrew's getting us hyped up. Who My, wants it more? <laughs> Get your ass on the line. <laughs> All right. But yeah, no, he's right. I, I mean, <clears throat> It is who wants it more. It, it really is at this point who wants it more. And that's why I, I favor the Cats because I think our guys are going to be – I think they were a little embarrassed when Tennessee beat us last time because Tennessee was up the whole game. They punked us. They did. But I think I think we got a little chip on our shoulder now. I think, I think we're starting to grow into our own, and I think our guys like it, and I think they're up for the challenge. I can tell it's Carson Nash, Tennessee week. You're making that very, very, very clear. Uh, this guy does not like Tennessee. I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, yeah, you're fired. But um, like serious, and it sounds like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm getting ready to give a cringy hype speech. Which I mean, I will. If they need it. I will. I'll get you fired up. I'll get you brick wall ready. But seriously, I, I think this game, I think this team, skill wise, skill wise, I know there's, you know, ta- we're talking about talent. People forget. You know, talent is a little bit different from like production in college basketball. A lot of good college basketball players aren't going to be NBA players. Talent wise, this is very even, and you probably lean Kentucky. Um, Tennessee obviously has more of the experienced uh, college basketball players. Ziegler, I mean, their whole team basically, you know, yeah. experienced college basketball players. I mean, Connecty was at Colorado, wherever, West Colorado, forever. Which, yeah. you know, what's funny to me, how good was he at wherever he at? Southern Colorado or whatever. His highlights were insane. I mean, I remember there was rumors of him being speculated with UK, but that was before Antonio decided to come back. Yeah. Um, he must have been insane. I mean, can you, yeah. Yeah, he, I mean, right. he was hooping. He looked like uh, you ever seen Larry Bird's Indiana State highlights? It's kind of the same yeah, thing. Yeah. It's got to, yeah, that's a good point. But um, it's just a, it's a, it's a game where I think Kentucky's got to have that nobody's going to pick us mentality like they did against Auburn. Nobody thought they were going to beat Auburn. Nobody. And they went and they kicked their butt from start to finish. Um, no one's going to pick Kentucky in this game. So I, I think this is more the Nexus knows. Yes, you got to play defense. You got to, you got to, don't give Connect any airspace. You got to, um, you know, let Ziegler shoot it more than Connect or more than Viscope. Like there's lots, there's lots you can do X's knows wise. And we've talked some about that. But to me, this game is more about you have got, to just want this basketball game. I think you catch them at a perfect time, too. Yeah. They've the, had back-to-back emotional wins. Mm-hmm. I think you catch them at the right time. And and they're, you know, they're also they're they've got what they want. They want now they want to beat you. I'm not saying they're gonna overlook this game, but they've got their regular season title. They've got mm-hmm. the one seed locked up. They've they're happy, but that does not mean they're going to look past this game and say, well, who cares? They're going to show up in this game, but you do get them in no, a good this, time. No, this means more to their fans than anything. Yeah. They could – I I guarantee you their fans would trade a win against Kentucky over a regular season championship. Hmm. Maybe. What about a newborn child? Probably that too. Okay. Well, there you go. 
We're uh, yeah, we're we're a little we're a little unhinged today. Um, I told you, you know, the you came in with the backwards hat. You know, it wasn't me. <laughs> okay, well, if your hat was a different hat, you would have it on backwards. I need to order a, a new nice Kentucky hat. I found a cool one. It was like it was the on the old Wildcat with that was a rope hat. Thinking about ordering that for old Nashville. Yeah, um, would be a good choice. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what else to really break down about this game. I, I think. Um, X's and O's, you know, you, that's what you got to do. But I mean, do you have any other, any other thoughts on this game, Carson? Before we give score predictions, um, MVPs, and call it a day. Um, no, you do have to defend the paint better. You can't let their center seal you out like he did the whole yeah, last time day. you played, mm-hmm. and have Ziegler go for ten on just open layups. I mean, you can't have that. And and I I if Ziegler makes as many three pointers as he did last game, then you just tip your cap to that dude. Yeah. Cause that, that doesn't happen. But, um, so you, you do have to, you got to work on defending the paint better. Um, yeah. for sure. I think, I think that's a big key in this game. Uh, but you know, I think we can figure it out. And like I said, Justin's here now, mm-hmm. DJ's back. Z's emerged. Yeah. I think this team's a lot different than they were back then. And that's why I think the cats are going to win. I agree with you. Uh, well, I agree with you on some points. So give me give me a score prediction and MVP. I'm gonna. Oh man! All right, all right. Am I, I got. Am I allowed to? Am I allowed to pick Kentucky to win? Or are we? Do I do I have to pick against? It, now? I mean, it's up to you. It's all up to you. But it, it, is it a jinx if I pick against us now that I said that the one time I picked against us we won? No, pick against us. Do okay. whatever you need to do. Um, well, that's fine. I I think the Cats are gonna win. I think we win eighty eight to. 83, 88 to 83 cats beat the Vols and we get to, um, you know, cherish that and, you know, lead on to being a two seed most likely if you win, because then all you would need is you would need South Carolina to lose. Yeah. I think either you need South Carolina to lose and you get to two seed or you need Auburn to win Auburn. You, you or either need to win. that. Or you need Auburn, Alabama, and South Carolina to win, and then you then you get the two seed. Yeah, something along. I'm that. I'm getting ready to have an article up at Wildcats today. Literally, the time when we get done recording, that's going to lay out all of these scenarios. So if you are curious about all the scenarios, go you can check, go check that out at Wildcats today. Um. So yeah, now I have one more question, and it is: What does a evening in the life of Carson Nash look like? if Kentucky were to win this basketball game. But remember, this is a family-friendly show. Yeah, yeah. Family-friendly, family-friendly. Um, I, You know, game starts at 4, right? It's Saturday. I'm actually – I'm going to Riley Green on Friday, so that'll be fun. And then I'll wake it's up man, Saturday. Um, I'll go meet up with the boys, with the friends, the fellas. Um, we're going to watch the game, and then the Cats are going to win, and you won't be hearing from me much after that. Well, I'm hoping I'm going to be with you. After no, you'll be with me, but yeah, people trying to contact my cellular device won't be able to get on. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Well, um, oh, man, I hate this. Oh, Maybe, I didn't give you um, MVP. Yeah, I, I think MVP. I think MVP is going to be Justin Edwards. I mean, that's like four or eight for you no, on Justin Edwards. No, that's that's my second in a row, but it's it's because it's down there. He almost committed there. I think this game still is. I, this is kind of – this is when Justin became like, oh, he's actually kind of doing something now, was the Tennessee game when we lost. I was like, oh, he's playing good against Connect, Like, he's doing well. And then he started emerging, and now I think it's full-on Justin Edwards' breakout. Here's the deal. I thought about it. Reed Shepard will not get swept by Tennessee in his Kentucky career, assuming he does move on. Kentucky wins this game 82 79 in Knoxville. Is Take the two seed, stupid song and shove it. Is come on. <laughs> is the two seed in the SEC tournament and goes on a run in March. Book it. Boom. Any other boom. thoughts, Carson, before we call today? I love it. The Kentucky kid's not getting swept. And yeah. we're going to play him in the championship of the SEC tournament and beat him again. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Um, next episode, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get one of those things. And I forget what it's called, but it's where there's a five second delay. And if he says something silly, I can mute it. That's next time. Not today. 
Once again, not, we really today. not today. We really appreciate y'all being here. It really does mean a lot. We're fired up for this game. Clearly, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, Tennessee fans that are here, appreciate you being here. Uh, if, if you're a Tennessee fan and you watch this and we lose, I owe you a beer. How about that? If, <laughs> yep. I'll, and, but you got to come to me and I'll buy you a beer. You, yeah, there you go. You got to come to them. You, you got to, this stuff's going on the internet, man. You got to make sure you add the caveats. To it. You got to come to me. You're not, you're not Venmoing for beers, but no, no, not Venmoing for beers. Yes. But like I said, we're fired up for this one. We know uh, everybody in Big Bull Nation is as well. It's going to be a fun basketball game. I can't wait. I'm literally shaking. Going to be a fun one. I know Carson, like, you need to talk to somebody, you need some help. <laughs> This you know me. Up. You've you've known me for too long. You know I, know. I know. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. But we really appreciate all the support, ladies and gentlemen. I really, really do. I mean, it's it's y'all are really trying to help and trying to blow this thing up. And it's that's made been made clear in the comments by hitting that subscribe button and the like button. Y'all y'all just don't know what you what you mean to us. What you're doing for this channel. We really, from the bottom of our hearts, appreciate it. So everybody, have a great rest of your day today. Big game coming up on Saturday. Enjoy it. And then on Monday, we will be back to recap, hopefully a Kentucky win, and break down the SEC tournament. Carson and I will be heading to Nashville. Going to have a good time. Going to be great. Um, ooh, watch out. That's where these Tennessee fans might find you for your beer. So uh, that might have been a silly Exactly. Thing. But see, if they're watching the show, I'll, you know, I'll get them one. There you go. All right. Appreciate y'all being here. Everybody have a great weekend. Hopefully a big Kentucky win, and we will see you all next time.